Hey, this is Dave from Retired Time Productions, and I gotta say, the sun is really bright today. It's really blinding. Wouldn't you like to know how to take great video using your Mavic Pro on really bright sunny days? Well, I think I've found the solution. It has to do with this chart right here and ND filters. So let's take a look now. Welcome to Retired Time Productions. So thanks to one of my viewers for helping me out with a few comments and a few suggestions. And a couple of them were links that he gave me. And his screen name was Low Light Videos. So thanks to Low Light Videos for the help. I also want to thank English Turbans for suggesting that I put a glare shield on my tablet right here because that really helps too. So keep on making those suggestions and comments. But I have this chart right here. It's uh, basically a EV chart that shows you how you can vary three variables to get the best picture. Now what we're looking for overall, what I was told, is there's a 180 degree shutter angle rule that makes the uh, frame rate determine how, what your shutter speed is going to be. So if you have like 24 frames a second, then you'll want a shutter speed of around 48. And if you had 30 frames a second, then you'd want 60. So if we look at this chart, what we want to do is get this middle value, the overall brightness or exposure value, to be somewhere around zero for the best results. And we'll take a look at that in when we get into looking at the DJI GO app settings. But what we have here is shutter speed over here and we're going to set that whatever we want. It'll probably be either 24 frames or 30 frames over here. That's frames per second. And then we have the ISO and it's recommended to keep the ISO as low as you can hopefully around 100. And then over here is our aperture setting. Now, one thing I found out that was kind of an eye-opener for me was that the Mavic's eye is open all the time. It's got an aperture opening of f2.2, so that would be the stop that it's set at, and it's permanently that way. You can't change it, so it's got a pretty wide aperture. And having a wide aperture also means it reduces the depth of field. So you can see if you have a small aperture opening, the field will be in focus close and far away. But if you have a wide aperture opening, it's going to be in focus wherever you set it, and then other distances may be blurry. Well, that's the way the Mavic is, and we just can't do anything about it. It's set with a pretty wide aperture opening. So we can't do anything about the depth of field, but we can change the light value coming in by adding filters. So that's what we do is apply ND filters, which are neutral density, and what they do is they keep the color information neutral, but they change the amount of light coming in. So that's what we do is add different filters to control this aperture value and adhere to our 180 degree shutter angle rule. Okay, now that we know that, let's go in and see how we can do it in the settings in the DJI GO app and where we can find those settings. Well, what we do is we can go right down here and get into the camera settings by doing that. Now you'll notice up here above the red button, above the record button, is a camera and, or a video recorder. Right now it's on the video recorder. If I do this, it's in the photography camera mode. And if I go back here, it's more like a camcorder. So let's put it on the camcorder for now. These settings really apply to either one, so if I change anything in here, like if I change the shutter speed to 800, for example, and I go back to camera mode, it's still an 800, and this is still 100 on the ISO. And you can see the EV, which was in the middle of the chart, right down here, and it's 0.7 right now. So let's go back to the video recorder mode. And we're in manual right here. If you're over here in auto, just press this M and switch it back to manual. Okay, now what ideally we want is a shutter speed of about uh, twice the frame rate right down here, and we don't have that right now. If we go into the camera settings right here, or the recorder settings actually, you can see that 
we have 1080p 30 frames a second right there. To make it more cinematic, we might want 24 frames a second. So to do that, we'd have to go in here and put it on 24 like that. And if you more, wanted more resolution, you could go to 2K like this. So there's 2K, or you could go to 4K at 24 frames a second. So now we're looking for a, you know, a shutter speed of twice that, which would be 48. But if you go back in here, right here, and we try to get 48, we can't get it, but 50 is the closest we can get. Now you notice all these lines right here, and the reason for that is if you go into the gear icon right here, you'll notice that I have overexposure warning on. Let me go back in there. So overexposure warning is on, and I've also got the histogram on, which is down here. And we have our settings where we want them, but we're not getting a good exposure. So obviously this is way overexposed. So I'm going to skip over the uh, ND4 filter and use the ND8 and try that. So let's try the ND8 first. So despite there being a number of different ND filters on the market, I got these when I bought my Mavic Flymore package. I just added these onto the order as an extra accessory and they came from DJI. So these DJI filters, these neutral density filters, have three little clips on the edges right there and they're very simple to install. All you have to do is hold the gimbal firmly like this with the quadcopter off of course. You don't want your Mavic on. Hold the gimbal and then just press it on there and you'll hear the little clips click on and that's it. Okay so now the ND8 filter is on there and you can see a marked improvement. There's a lot less of this overexposure warning. There's some in the sky but uh, the rest looks really good and if we go back in our settings we can see the EV is dropped from 2 down to 1.3. Still not great. We would like it lower. In fact let's just go ahead and record this. I'll just go ahead and uh, do a short recording and I'll tap to focus. There we go. Alright, that brings it into focus. And now we're recording. So you can see what we got there. The sky is kind of blown out. Granted, there aren't many clouds out there to see. So you may not be seeing any clouds. We'll look at that later. But obviously we got a little bit of overexposure. Uh, we could turn the gimbal down towards the ground. You can even see overexposure there on the railing. Okay, so now we have the ND16 filter on and that's a huge improvement. I can even see clouds in the sky. Let's just go ahead and go in the menus here. Yep, we're on 50, 100 and we've got 24 frames a second and 2.7K right there. True color. And if you look here, the white balance I've got set on sunny day. If I was to put that uh, anywhere else, I don't think it would be as good for this day. So I just left it on sunny. And I didn't want it on auto because I didn't want it changing on me and getting different white balances during the video. Okay, let's just go ahead and record a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and focus again. Tap screen to focus. So you hit on the exposure icon, go in here, and you can relate everything to that chart I showed you. So the middle, the middle value in the chart would be the EV, which is down here, which we have a nice 0.7 right now. So 0.7 is good. It would be better if we could get it all the way to zero, because then this exposure would go away. And that's how it would look if it was zero. So that's how the histogram would look if it was zero. But it's not really that centered. In fact, it looks a little on the dark side. And I think where we had it was probably the best right there because there's a little bit of space on each side of the white information. So it's kind of centered right there between light and dark. So I think that's a really good setting right there. So 0.7 for 
the EV value over the overall brightness is good and that's in the center of the chart and that's being affected by all of these things the ISO the shutter speed and the filter which changes the value of the light so all those three things combined give us a value that's right in the range we want it you can either look down here at the EV here or look at the histogram and see what's going on probably you'll be looking at the histogram so that's why I wanted you to be able to relate this histogram to the picture okay so if we want to take a picture all we have to do is press this little icon go into picture mode and then you can just take a snapshot like that and the settings for the uh, for the camera are basically done the same way right now we have the same settings that we had for the recording if we go in here there are a few different things like the image ratio let's go 16 by 9 for example alright so now it looks just like when we're taking a movie go back and there's a few other things you can change like the you could do the white balance I'm going to leave the white balance right where it is right where I already got everything is to be working out there's style and color just like there is in the other one so let's go ahead we'll take a picture and there we go so I'm always thankful for any help I got so if you found that there is anything that I could do better just let me know with a comment under video if you have any questions also just put a comment there and if you're new and you haven't subscribed just go ahead and subscribe so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time Here,